You know it's time for change when children act like leaders and leaders act like children. I took this photo at one of the protests because I agree we do find ourselves in a climate crisis. The day after it had been shared more than 20,000 times on social media, and in the coming weeks, it was shared widely across social media by uh, Greenpeace International, large organization, blogs, news. Millions have seen this message. And it only takes a cardboard sign and a phone. It is incredible that we can be connected so quickly, especially now and with this issue. Because this is historic. In 2019, history was made. Children in the streets across the world, they're about the same time striking for climate action. Several times on Fridays throughout most of the year, with the more connected world comes both great awareness and responsibility. I have been working with young people, the Sustainable Development Goals and Entrepreneurship for almost five years in a nonprofit called Young Sustainable Impact. At university, my focus has been management, social science, and computer science. I became interested in technology due to the applications being developed to address the Sustainable Development Goals However, going into this area of technology, I quickly discovered that there are great applications, yet often a lack of awareness of the carbon footprint. As a personal project, I started writing about artificial intelligence every day. Uh, I've written one new article every day for 243 uh, days, <laughs> and uh, I've set myself the goal to do this for 500 uh, days. Today is part of that journey, and I'll focus on connecting three topics. The climate crisis, artificial intelligence, and technology infrastructure. This may sound a bit like combining jelly beans uh, with uh, cauliflower and uh, bicycles, uh, but stick with me. Together, this shapes one topic I believe to be of great importance in the present. Responsible use of technology for our shared ecology. By 2025, one-fifth of the global electricity could be consumed by our devices and data we store. That is a pretty big slice of all of our energy. Each app on your phone or service you use has data. That data has to be stored in a physical place, on servers. You do most likely not know where your data is. Still, our digital footprint is there. It is saved, trashed, archived. Emails is an interesting example. If every person in France had deleted 50 of their emails, the unread, the archived, right now we could have saved enough energy to power the Eiffel Tower for 42 years. And that is just the tip of the Eiffel Tower. Being ethical for a technology company means asking you who the self-driving car should hit. However, to me, this is hit and run ethics. Certainly important, yet we have to go further. Training one decision-making process on a lot of data could consume the lifetime emission of five cars. We could argue that self-driving cars would enable a better flow in traffic, yet we have to remember the context. Indeed, what will happen with a million or 100 million self-driving vehicles. Currently, a large proportion of the energy used in technology is not renewable. 
you cannot easily recycle or reuse your electrical products. And what industries pollute the most? Mining, oil, and shipping, all required to build and distribute technology. Electronics, after all, are built through minerals, and that means mining across the world. Minerals are transported around the world. Fossil fuels are used in most cases to run this transport. When electronics are built, they have to be transported, manufactured, and transported to a variety of locations. Then, when it is operative, it must be run through the cloud. Some leaders in technology got their head in the cloud. Each cloud solution requires data, and that means a physical data center. The material cost of building cooling systems for servers and elsewhere has one of the highest adverse impacts on the planet. When we say, don't worry, just put it in the cloud, that means a physical place that must be attended to. At the same time, the price of selling data has risen to the price of oil. It was said, data will become the new oil. Well, it has. That is not something technology companies should be proud of. Then there is AI. AI is a program set of decisions operating in an environment. The adverse impact of constantly running some AI models for a year is hard to come by. However, we know streaming video accounts for one of the biggest chunks of the world's internet traffic. Technology companies are not open or direct about this matter. And in fact, some actively work against the understanding of their impact on the environment. Let us consider a lesson from the past. The tobacco industry was funding scientific health research on why tobacco is, is good for you. The technology industry is funding scientific AI research on why AI is good for you. These technology companies want to find ways to measure and report on their own emissions. We have seen this fail in mining companies reporting on river spills, in oil companies reporting on oil spills, and in smoking companies reporting on the health benefits of their products. Technology companies reporting on how climate-friendly their technology is is not a good idea. It becomes unaccounted for, and technology leaders are not held responsible. Technology employees are rebelling, protesting. They know what is happening. They're not stupid, and they see that it is wrong. Some of the smartest people on the planet are giving us a clear message, and it is that we have to take climate leadership now. The large technology companies do set targets. 100% renewable energy is a good start. Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple have all committed to this. However, they have lost the trust of many with their use of private information and been irresponsible in many cases. So these companies should not be trusted to police their own emissions. To do your best is no longer good enough. I am not against technology. But we don't solve the climate crisis with unlimited data plans. I'm not against the use of artificial intelligence. But it has to be way more responsible. We don't solve this crisis without accountability. We don't solve it without responsibility. They still need to be accountable. We know there is a limit to growth. This change has to lie both with us and the large technology companies. We need systemic change, and we have to change, because we are the cleanup generations. It includes all of us. We have to make our air more fresh, our water cleaner, and our forests more lush. We have to build technology 
to assist in the regeneration of our ecological environment. We can aspire to build planet-centered technology. Young people have taken leadership on this issue, and leaders in technology have to follow. Let us make technology responsible. We can be making artificial intelligence work for our shared ecology. We have to listen to technologists that are increasingly making their voices heard, speaking up on this issue. We have to listen to the young people who made their voices heard in the streets, carrying signs, racing the planet, asking to be heard. You know it's time for change when children act like leaders and leaders act like children. That is all I have to say, and thank you so much for listening.